All right, today I want to discuss the Snyder Cut, namely because I just spent four hours watching it for highly enjoyable hours, and I believe it marks an absolute landmark victory for true comic book, movie, and superhero fans all around the world. Now, before really getting started, I have to acknowledge something. I won't be focusing, during this video at least, this particular video, on the recent controversy surrounding Zack Snyder himself and certain comments about fan communities such as geeks and gamers. If you don't know what's been going on, essentially there was a smear campaign that targeted a few creators I personally know. I was a guest even on their podcast not too long ago, and I view these allegations to be nothing short of slanderous. Then there was a moment where I believe Zack Snyder himself poorly phrased a few thoughts on a charity stream, further exacerbating a situation that was already highly tense. And the resulting back and forth has been, shall we say, a focal point in the community that would require its own dedicated video to entirely explain. That's not my main focus today, because having just watched the Snyder Cut and harkening back to the flurry of accusations that this four-hour marathon of a director's cut would be a win for toxic fandoms, there was really a lot of media figures saying that, and still saying that, actually, I wanted to explain why the Snyder Cut is actually an absolute categorical win in general for all fans everywhere. It all starts midway through the production of Justice League, which would eventually come out in 2017, to an overwhelmingly negative reception. Both critics and fans were honestly underwhelmed, and this could be directly traced back to a singular moment. Halfway through the movie's development cycle, Zack Snyder, the lead director at the time, left the team because of family issues. Having been known for a very specific artistic style, this would be the moment where Justice League fell apart because Warner Brothers and their solution to this departure was to hire Joss Whedon the director behind Marvel's Avengers. To some people, that might seem like a very good thing. After all, the Avengers franchise has become massively popular in recent years, and there's a good reason for that, but for anyone who was a fan of Snyder's more gritty, dark, and dramatic atmosphere choices, it would end up being catastrophic. Joss Whedon tried to do what he had already done and make the films more upbeat, witty, and for lack of a better way to describe it, and it's also exceedingly obvious that this would inevitably happen really, obviously, he transformed the Justice League film into something much more akin to the Marvel properties. There was witty dialogue that felt massively out of place, a large number of scenes had to be reshot entirely to accommodate certain changes, and even worse, Henry Cavill was contractually obligated at that time for a separate movie role to keep a large mustache and not shave. This led to special effects being used to conceal his facial hair, which made it painfully obvious just how much of the movie had been adapted, and the collision of these two directors' unique and individual creative stances led to a really, really bad film. Enter The Snyder Cut. The Snyder Cut was a rumored director's cut that encompassed Zack Snyder's full creative vision for the film, and a fan movement to see that vision realized began to gain so much momentum all around the world that Warner Brothers actually paid attention and ultimately they gave in. The thing was, that movement, almost from day one, came under fire because harassment or toxicity or whatever other manufactured complaints can be churned out to demonize a group of people who love the cinematic universe and really want to see a good Justice League movie, not some sort of demented amalgamation of separate visions. Here's the part where modern social media norms will try to dictate that I conform to the virtuous theatrical practice of condemning any harassment at all, or insults, or toxicity because they are wrong, and that's always bad. It's the part where they bludgeon people into adding qualifiers to their support of anything by demanding that they always denounce every little thing that goes too far while trying to modify the behavior of others, even minuscule sections of a movement, because those sections are wrong and vile and blah blah blah. I don't care. The Snyder Cut fans wanted to see a product released. The movement grew enormous, absolutely enormous. There was like a billboard in Times Square. They hired a plane with a, a giant sign to fly across Comic-Con, I think. Like, it was huge. There were probably, and there actually verifiably were, a few people who said or posted things that were stupid, uncalled for, and wrong. But honestly, that was a negligible subset of the population, and I simply don't care for the performative condemnations that are seemingly expected these days. I'm not going to jump around and go through hoops and like really try and spice up everything so that I've condemned every aspect of the movement that might have been slightly offensive to some people on social media somehow. I simply, I simply don't care. Even better, article after article after article was released that tried to brand the entire group of fans as disgustingly toxic, while asserting that this film being created, or rather remastered from the director's cut that Snyder had already produced years prior, was a dangerous precedent to set, effectively claiming that because Warner Brothers was producing a film that by all accounts should be superior to what was launched previously, and because fans were getting what they wanted, it was a bad thing. Funnily enough, almost all of these articles had something else in common. They drew parallels, numerous parallels, 
to Star Wars, and more specifically, select films in that franchise. The reason for this is pretty simple. The most recent Star Wars films are objectively bad from a narrative perspective, and have been rightly criticized for that fact. I won't spend too much time here, but the entire plot of the current Star Wars trilogy revolves almost exclusively around the most generic mechanisms possible. The whole thing is basically go place, get object, use object to defeat bad guy. There's little to no character development whatsoever, and the most prominent flaw is that the ultimate climactic moment cannot possibly mean anything or invoke any sort of quality response from viewers because Rey has never once suggested any sort of susceptibility to what the Emperor is eventually offering. She has not expressed a desire for power, she has not built up any sort of realistic confusion on where her moral compass might point, the whole thing falls flat on its face because the desire to subvert expectations is not a de facto method of artistic brilliance. Sometimes subverting expectations means you just did a bad job. Oh, also, the universal lore and physics just get absolutely butchered in the recent Star Wars films in a variety of separate ways, so there are plenty of reasons to hate those movies. Needless to say, Star Wars fans have been actively hoping for rewrites or new directions in the wake of those creative choices. And again, some of those people probably tweeted mean things here and there, and stuff that I would personally disavow, but I don't honestly care at all because when you take one of the most popular, beloved, and long-standing franchises in history and absolutely destroy, on purpose, the character and world elements that many people most enjoy, they are not just going to sit down and say, Thank you for ruining something I liked. The worst part is that a lot of times this modification that happens to people's hobbies, it's not just Star Wars, it's not just one cinematic universe, it happens all over the place. It happens in video games, it happens in, in cinema and film, all over. Uh, the worst part is that they don't just change it and then kind of let you go on your way. They change it and then they rub your face in it. They change it and then they... they puff it up as some kind of brilliantly stunning and brave thing. They change it and then they try to get you to acknowledge that it's better this way and that you were always wrong for liking what came before. That's really where people have this big disconnect and that's why they fight back so hard. In addition, when you, as a fan of something, anything really, get attacked and called a bigot or a racist or alt-right just because you criticize badly written aspects of that new story, it doesn't exactly make you receptive of the message that your antagonists are putting forward between those insults. And here's an example. People call a lot of recent Star Wars critics racist, but they were the ones harshly criticizing Disney for substantially reducing the prominence of John Boyega's character, Finn, only in their Chinese movie posters. The reality is they care about the entire universe, and that has remained mostly consistent. But that consistency is ignored because those that want to silence them can just selectively highlight individual stances within the movement of criticism in a larger picture, a much larger picture, in order to make them seem hateful or prejudiced. It's a slimy tactic, but it's highly effective. Well, the same thing happened with the Snyder Cut, and now that Warner Brothers has made the film and released it onto HBO Max, one side calls it a victory for toxic fandoms, and the other just calls it a victory because there is an amazing four-hour movie that we all get to watch where a singular creative vision can be seen. The most important factor here is that the movie is good. If we compare these two films to food, the original Justice League would be a kind of cheap microwave meal, and the Snyder Cut would be a meat and potatoes dinner with copious amounts of sauce. I won't do a full review of all the different scenes, cameos, and plot points. Maybe I will eventually, but it's a four-hour movie. That would be a really long review. But despite its length probably requiring two different sittings, right? If you're going to watch it, you might want to do it in two chunks, which some people might find to be a slight negative, maybe. The movie succeeds at building out characters and story aspects that enhance the overall experience. One great example would be Cyborg. The original film treated him like a plot-moving character, sort of, that was otherwise totally unimportant. However, the Snyder Cut shows significantly more emotion and depth behind his portion of the story while building him out, and some people might not like the actor or like his personal story, but they build him out in ways that feel much more substantial. I don't know if I would say he carries the movie like some people out there are claiming, but he, as a character, gets built out far more, and that works very well, in my opinion. Another key factor is the villain. Steppenwolf in the original film is a joke. You get the tiniest hint that he's part of something greater, and hardcore fans obviously know the lore behind who he is, but when Superman shows up, it's just one, two, KO, movies over, bye-bye, happy ending. Well, the Snyder Cut makes damn sure that you have the surrounding information to understand 
the structure of the invasion force. Steppenwolf is not even close to the top of the hierarchy. The impending greater conflict is actually conveyed here, the duality of timelines and so much more, which doesn't just improve the existing plot, it kind of transforms it into something better entirely. The Snyder Cut is a win for fans because it quite literally is everything they had claimed it was a couple of years ago. If the movie had launched and been terrible, it would have fueled an absolute tidal wave of articles about how listening to your fan base is toxic and they're, they need to be more inclusive and you need to modify how they think and like activism, really. It just would have had a whole bunch of activism in tow. Uh, the fan base is, is toxic and bad and how Warner Brothers should never have participated or indulged, but because it's actually good, and it's good in the exact way that fans had hoped for and claimed it would be, it sets a positive precedent, despite the negative spin that many journalists and media hacks will try to put on it, where playing off of your fan base, right, playing off of your fan base and putting real money, because this did cost, I believe, tens of millions of dollars to, to remaster, putting real money into content delivery aimed at things that your fan base clearly wants to see is now proven to be beneficial. Obviously, the film also benefits Warner Brothers. The new subscription service HBO Max gets a popular piece of content. The subscriber metrics get a boost, probably a huge boost based on that. It's overall, especially during a pandemic, a savvy business move, but ignoring the added benefit of seeing the most dedicated central members of a fan base finding success, seeing a product that they love come to exist, and that product being an absolutely undeniable success story when compared to the film that it supplants, well, it's worth acknowledging, especially when so many voices on the other side will seek to slander and tear down those who are happy to see it. The reality is a counter movement that sets up against something like the release the Snyder Cut fans back when it was a hashtag on Twitter and kind of a social media push will have just as much, if not more, vitriol, harassment, and underhanded brigading tactics in order to stop fans from expressing themselves as they claim their opposition to be guilty of. The difference is, one side just doesn't talk about it as much or use it as a bludgeon to advance their position because they aren't in this for ideological power and subjugation of their opponents, despite what their opponents say, because they'll always be labeled as wanting that sort of thing, but they really don't. They are in it because they care for the entertainment medium. They care for the franchise and they care about quality stories that they are then able to enjoy. The Snyder Cut is a win for actual fans of the Justice League property. It's an objectively better product than what we had before. Warner Brothers gained subscribers, among many other things, while putting tens of millions of dollars into a project that created jobs during a global pandemic. And ultimately, we got four hours of a great story, and everyone, literally everyone in this equation, is better off as a result of this. It's a win, period. It's not a win for toxicity. It's not a dangerous precedent. That's laughable that anyone would ever say such a thing. It's not a dangerous precedent to set. It's a good thing. It's a success story, and it's worth saying so publicly and with confidence. Now, I'm not here to only sing praises. There are a few scenes where I just didn't see a point. The length could have probably been trimmed down slightly with absolutely no downside. There were some moments where I subjectively thought the dialogue sucked, and it really did suck because some of those moments and those lines were things that I thought Joss Whedon had done. Actually, I think everybody thought that Joss Whedon had done those and really was like, oh, the, the bad dialogue won't be in the Snyder version, and then a lot of the bad dialogue, the same bad dialogue was in the Snyder... But anyway, looking at it from a macro perspective, the overall movement turned product and now finally released, it's a good thing. Nothing more, nothing less. But that's it. If you want to support, there are links down below, primarily Odyssey, if you want to watch on the platform that supports me the most. Also Locals, for $5 a month, you can get completely ad-free versions of the videos as well as a direct line of communication to me. There's another YouTuber to check out, merch, social media, etc., etc. but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.